Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming in here. Uh, I am a preacher of the Word of God. But you should know that uh, I was not born this way. Uh, I was one of the beautiful, typical African man. Amen. But you know, my background, I was not born in a Christian family. I was born in a Muslim family. And uh, I studied Islam. In my family, actually, I am like a child number 52. Did you hear that? <laughs> From one man. That is a strategy of turning countries into Muslim countries through producing many children. Uh, I studied Islam as a theologian. I studied the Islamic theology. I know the Quran. I know Arabic. And it was very hard for me to become a Christian. But today, I want to talk about the power of God. Why? Not because I know, but because I have experienced it. There is power in the church, and there is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, help me to tell your neighbor, there is power in the name of Jesus. So, my topic tonight is walking in the power of God. Tell your neighbor, walking in the power of God. I'm sorry, I am a pastor, but I believe in a talking church. <laughs> there is a power in your mouth than the power in your muscles. Did you hear that? In the world, there is power in the muscles. In the church, there is power in the mouth. Whatever you choose to speak, you will become. Am I talking sense to you? So I believe in a talking church. Help me to tell your neighbor, walking in the power of God. The power of God touched me and changed my life. Because Islam indoctrinates people. Islam is not a religion of uh, only brain. It has a way it indoctrinates people. And you become somebody who cannot change. You become radical doing something which is not important. But after hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, I got afraid to change. Because the law of Islam says, Man yuru tadili indi nihi fakturuh. For you who pray, pray for the Middle East. Because there are many Muslims who want to be Christians, but they fear to be persecuted. Because the law of Islam says, when you desert Islam, you must be persecuted. So I feared. I said, I have had Christianity, but they will kill me if I change. I spent some time knowing that Christianity is the truth, but fearing to change. One night, everybody say one night. I got a dream. It was a terrifying dream. But in this dream, I saw myself tied on the chains, my hands and my legs. And I was in the midst of the fire. The fire was burning. Like some of you have been to a swimming pool, so you know what I'm talking about. It's like a swimming pool, but this swimming pool is a fire. 
I saw myself swimming in fire. And uh, in the midst of that pain, on the right side, I saw somebody standing and was shining. The face was shining. You could not see clearly the face, but you could see that this is a person. But a great light was coming out of this face. You could not see clearly, but it was a glorious atmosphere. Outside the fire, I'm swimming in the fire, crying, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Islamic things with my people, colleagues whom I used to go with in a mosque. And somebody stood outside and told me, Islam is leading you to that, to that torture. Repent. Become a Christian, you shall survive. Immediately I came out of that dream. And because I was a trained Muslim, they train us that when you get a bad dream, what you do, you pray a prayer against a bad dream. I prayed a prayer against a bad dream. And I slept. That dream came again. I could not sleep anymore. I waited in the morning and I went to my grandfather who is an area imam. Imam means a leader of a mosque, like a pastor. The equivalent of a pastor in a church in a mosque is called imam. He's a very prominent, my grandfather. I told him and he said, maybe Christian is bewitching you. So Christian spirits are coming to attack you. Let us chase away the Christian spirits. We prayed to chase away the Christian spirits. And I went home and slept. And the dream came again. I remembered that I had a preacher who said that you can pray something in the name of Jesus. That night, because the dream was terrible, I did not pray the Islamic way. I chose to pray a Christian way. I knelt down and lifted up my hands and I said, God, if you are the one who wants me to be a Christian, take away this dream. And I promised that if the dream does not come back, I will become a Christian in the name of Jesus. It was my first time to pray in the name of Jesus. After that, I went on my bed. Amazingly, after many days of trouble, that night I slept like a baby. I realized in the morning that I've been with a troubling dream. And uh, I remembered that I promised I would be a Christian. I chose to take myself to the church. By the way, it was an Easter day. It was a celebration of Resurrection Sunday. I got converted on Easter Sunday. And uh, I took myself to the church. And I gave my love to Jesus. From that day, I loved Jesus. I have seen the power of Jesus. But like I told you, the moment my people knew that I'm born again, I become a Christian, they began persecuting me. I was excommunicated from my family. They have tried to kill me 12 times. That's why today, before I show you a few pictures, I want us to read from the book of Acts chapter number 1 and verse 8. I'm going to give you four verses, but two at the beginning and two at the end. Acts 1. But, can we read together? I count three and we read. This counting of three is very important. And I'm copying it here and I'm taking it in Africa. Okay, one, two, three.
Everybody say, you will receive power. Do you see that Jesus is addressing his disciples? But he's emphasizing that they need power. Hallelujah. You need education. You need to beautify yourself. You need a mobile phone, good one. A Mercedes Benz. But more so, you need power. Hallelujah. You need power. Lift up one hand and say, I need power. You know, according to Jesus, this was the last, one of the last statements as he was going to heaven. He could have told them, you need gold. You need diamond. You need a huge house. But he said, you need what? Because power can bring other things. And power can solve things that other things cannot solve. You will understand that later. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, we see, you know, Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. If you believe, say amen. amen. But now he's saying, when Jesus had called the twelve together, that together means all of them, he gave them money. He gave them a vehicle. He gave them Tell your neighbor, you need the power of Jesus. True, we need a house, we need uh, to look good, we need everything, but more so, we need power. Tonight, I want to pray with you. Before I leave this stage, God is going to give you more power. Do you like that? People desire for political power. But there is a power that's beyond political power. That's the power of Jesus Christ. We go to school to get academic power, intellectual empowerment. But there is a power that's above academic power. This power can solve problems that doctors cannot manage to test, to try. Hallelujah. That's why you see me talking to you. In many of the types, ways Muslims have tried to kill me. I told you 12. I'm going to give you a few. Let me see if I can remember them here. Many times, this is not a book. This is a reality. One time I was preaching and many people came to the Lord. I'm very glad that God has anointed me to preach the gospel. And I see many people coming to the Lord in Africa. Give Jesus a big hand clap because of the souls that are coming to the kingdom. But like I told you, the law of Islam says you convert, you have to be killed. They attacked me as I was going home. And uh, a man whom I knew, we used to go with him in the mosque. He jumped out of the bush with a gun, AK-47 rifle. Automatic rifle with 36 bullets in. And it charged on me. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's one thing to watch it in a movie and another to see it in a reality. I turned around and I saw the man saying, stop. One bullet. He said, one mistake, one bullet. And I remember 
That one I had heard, the last time I heard that was in a movie of Schwarzenegger. I was studying as a young man. Now it's a reality. You know, when you see it in a movie, you think it's, you know, a simple thing. But when you're facing it, I, then I, I remembered that I was trying to learn some karate, kickboxing, kung fu. Then my mind was serving me that, can I do a back summer like a Bruce Lee here? This is a reality, ladies and gentlemen. And then I realized that if I mess up trying to become a Bruce Lee, the money will finish me. Because it was in a, cro a close range. And then he told me, stop. But amazingly, I feared, but amazingly, I don't know why I did not stop. Because I had feared. But I continued walking. My left leg stepped in water. In Africa, we have some roads that are not tarmacked. So, stepped in water, and I was like going down. Then I felt a hand of somebody touching me on the shoulder and turning me around like this. You know, if somebody is having a gun there and has made a target, and then you turn a little bit, that means you have gone out of what? And I fell down. As I was going down, that's when I saw bullets. It was in the, in the night. I saw four bullets coming my way. In that very motion, when somebody is shooting bullets, is when I went down. Ladies and gentlemen, the man lifted up a gun, shouted, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, thinking that he has shot me. Even me, I thought he has shot me. Because remember, my eyes were behind and I had stepped in water. I thought, when I had water, I thought blood is coming out of me. So when I fell down, I thought maybe I'm dying because I had never died before, so I didn't know how you die. So I thought maybe this is how they die. Now I'm going. And the man lifted the gun and said, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, thinking that he has shot me. Because the law of Islam says, when you kill them, don't think you are the one killing them. Allah is killing them through you. So he was praising his God. Then I touched myself and I had no pain. I checked and it was water, not blood. Then I remembered I had a hand. Then I knew the almighty God has saved his servant. One of the key things that is hindering Christians to see the power of God is fear. Can I say it again? We try to calculate spiritual things basing on our human understanding. And we fail to attract the power of God. I got converted from a Muslim background. It's a threatening background. Whoever converts is killed. So, it's scaring. It has attraction to fear. But the Bible says, we were not given the spirit of fear, but the spirit of boldness. And I've been reaching to these Muslims. And many, by the way, in my church, 35% of my church members are ex-Muslims. They have given their love to Jesus Christ. <laughs> of course, they persecute them. But this is also another point to give you. There is a misconception. Everybody say misconception. Is that good English? People think, if you have the power of God, no problem will come your way. Look at your neighbor and say, hope you are not thinking that way. <laughs> and some confusing preachers, they preach that. I'm glad Pastor Melissa is not preaching that. Let me tell you something. If you have the power of God like Joseph, who 
is that one? They will sell you to slavery. They will betray you. Your own brothers. Not a stranger. If you have the power of God like Moses, and God has called you to redeem his people, the same people you want to redeem will betray you. You are helping them, they will betray you. And God will come down to confirm that he has called you. If you have the power of God like Sadrach, Mesach, and Abdunego, you know them in the Bible? You know those three guys? They will try to put you in the fire. But guess what? The Lord whom you serve may not come when they are binding you. Because some people ask questions. Oh God, where, where are you when these things are happening to me? Stop asking God questions. There is a lot of legal terminologies in the churches today. Where are you, Lord? No, you Lord. Don't cry. Worship. There is nothing new that has happened to you that the Lord is not aware of. Worship the Lord when everything is okay. And worship him when the situation turns tough. As you worship, redemption is coming your way. Sadraj, Mesach, and Abdunego, they were put in a furnace of fire. The question is, these people are persecuted because of a God. Where is their God? They are binding them. God is watching. They are throwing them in the fire. God is watching. But when they threw them in the fire, did they get burned? Huh? Where was God? That question never asked it. Lord, where are you? Why me? Why me? You must be the one. Because you are the one who is going to testify. Oh my God. Am I preaching something to you? The reason today, church, they don't experience the power of God is because they have a lot of legality in their mind. Shouldn't be me. You have to be you. Why? If you are the Daniel, you will see yourself, even if you are doing the right thing, you find yourself in a den of a lion. Am I talking sense to you? But one thing that is for sure the Lord decided to do is he will never leave you. He will never disappoint you. Regardless of the challenge, the challenges may come. And when you see them, don't fear. Let them come. The more you get challenged is the more you will testify. Today, I'm moving all over America with my testimony. But look at this face. It was burnt. But the Lord did not allow me to die. When I was in Uganda, they said they cannot manage. They took me to India. When I was in India, the doctor said, I have 99 chances to die. I said, if God wants me to die, I will die. But if God wants me to live, I will cling on the 1%. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here to tell you, 1% with Jesus is better than the majority. The same doctors who said that I, I'm not going to leave today, they are calling me a friend. Because I'm leaving today to tell a story. I want to show you a few pictures. You see, you know, I told you I was one of the beautiful guys. Look at this picture. Get that smile. Get me another one. Look at that guy. This is an American missionary. I was talking to this American missionary in the town called Ginger. Another one. Look at this one. 
seated in the office. That was a few months, actually around 20 days before I was attacked. Then again, that's the night I was attacked. You can see my face, it's burnt with acid. When acid touches your skin, first day, it does not show up. It goes inside and eat from within out. And then, bruised face. You can see, this mouth was burnt and te teared like scar. Another one. That's why Americans listen to me. Whoever tells you that Islam is a peaceful religion, that is the peace he's talking about. I was a Muslim, I know. In the Quran, there are over 100 verses that commands Muslims to kill non-Muslims. One of it is in Surah 2, chapter 2 of the Quran, 193, it says, I can read all of them, but I don't have time. I studied the Quran, I don't need to open it to read it. I have it here. But the grace of God has turned me into an evangelist, a preacher of the gospel. I was in Sheba Hospital, another one. All the skin you saw, this got peeled off and my head had to be covered like that. This is the night they told me I have 99 chances to die. And I slept like this for many months because the skin was falling off. Another one. After that, my head was tied like that for a, a, a long time. And uh, because I, I got skin implant, I was, I was not walking. I, I was learning to walk again. This is a minister in the government of Israel, actually working in the prime minister's office. And this is my doctor in Israel. This is the man. Regardless of the challenge, I'm still preaching the gospel. What are you going through? I have good news. Jesus will get you out of it. Tell your neighbor, what is it that is troubling you? Now, tell him, if you really believe in Jesus, you're going to go out of it. Am I talking sense to you? Give me another one. Look. After opening the face, this is how it looked. Another one. They covered me with this pressure mask for two years. But I'm still alive. Let me tell you, Americans, you can close my, my sister or my brother. Thank you. Let me tell you something. Open your Bibles in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. What is it saying? Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what? But of what? Let me tell you something. Intellectual Christianity is very hard to maintain. You only become a religious fanatic. You need the power. You need the power. The power can beautify somebody better than a makeup. The power can strengthen you better than a gym. You may tighten and strengthen your muscles and fail to do some things. But with God, all things are possible. Today, I will, I will give you a testimony when I come again. Do you need me to come again to this church? Please listen. I have more than five Muslims who came to kill me. And when I was preaching, they said, let us, let us go and kill this man. When I was preaching, they got stuck there in the crowd. They dropped the stones. They dropped the weapon. 
and they gave their life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> they are men of that kind, but five among those today are pastors. Glory to Jesus. Give Jesus a big hand clap. That's why the Bible says, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. First Corinthians 2, 5. It's our last verse. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5. We'll read it. So that your faith When we come to church, we read the Bible, yes. When we, we believe, we Christians, yes. But let your faith rest in the power of God. Always know what your academic, your money, your intellect cannot do, God will do. Am I talking sense to you? Somebody say amen. amen. I was preaching in Kenya. A place is called Kasarani in Kenya. I preached the gospel. The leader of a mosque was a Somali man, a man from Somalia. One of the most, you know, radical Muslims are coming from Somalia. Because 99% of Muslims in Somalia, you know, of people in Somalia are Muslims. So they regard Islam as culture. But this man gave his life to Jesus Christ. Everybody say amen. amen. It was good news to us, but then it brought some bad news. They attacked me. In a hotel in Kenya. But what happened, we did not know that some guys are attacking us. That is very important to a Christian. Even the wars you don't know, God will fight them for you. One thing happened when I was coming out of the vehicle, we had people running in the fence there, running, running quickly. They were saying, niazimu, niazimu, niazimu. That is a Swahili word meaning, he's a ghost, he's a ghost, he's a ghost. We didn't know what has happened. But the man went and slept. And when he went home, the one who was commanding them, he got the same dream that I got. You remember the dream? The man who commanded the people to attack me got the same dream that I got. And then in the morning, he was the imam of a mosque. The imam goes to the mosque in the morning to call others. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He did not come. So the Muslims could not go to worship because the one who is calling them is not calling. They did know that that night we had a prayer night and the man was with us praising the name of Jesus Christ. We kept the imam busy in the, in, the, in the church and nobody was calling in the morning. When they realized, they said, Allah Akbar, this man must be killed. How can he turn our leader into that? And they came to kill him. Praise the name of the Lord. But the one who led them got a dream and God was telling him the same thing that he told. So this man, when they came and said, we we were in the mosque, you are not coming. Why? The man said, I have decided to become a Christian. They tried to beat him. He jumped in the, in the, in the, in the, in the window and came to Uganda. And he told me, the reason I've become a Christian, I saw a dream when I was in fire. And he told me the dream that I saw, that he has seen it. But then he said, one of the, before the dream, we came to kill you. But when you came out of the vehicle, we saw you turning into a lion. Listen, they are saying, when they tried to kill me, I came out of the vehicle and they saw me turning into a lion. You remember, we had them run, uh, run, running and saying, he's a ghost, he's a ghost, he's a ghost. The truth is, people of God, I have never turned into a lion. That is the truth. I'm a human being from day one. But one thing I have to tell you, when God is defending you, he can do anything to defend your life.
If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.